provisions of the Constitution. That or an end of the filibuster would allow Democrats to advance legislation without Republican support. Manchin's vote is key in the evenly divided Senate. In Sudan, the death toll from days of tribal violence in Darfur has reached 132. Looting continued today in the provincial capital of West Darfur, where a shooting on Saturday triggered the conflict. Tensions between Arab and non-Arab tribes have posed a challenge for the country's transitional government to bring lasting peace to the region. Myanmar's military rulers are now... Well, I don't want to stop that. I want to keep doing that as long as I can. There will be signs, really, graphically, Joy, of, of diminished oxygen and the injury that causes to the brain. So there are other data points to look at to say, okay, well, maybe the brain actually suffered what we call an anoxic injury. And they can hopefully be able to, to, to look at that information. Wow. Well, I, I, I can't wait to see this testimony tomorrow. The science part I find fascinating, and I think a lot of people did, too. Um, thank you very much for explaining that, Mark Claxton. Uh, Brent Williams. And Dr. Vin Gupta, my, 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 my instructor on all things medical related on this show, live on TV, and I always appreciate you for that. Still ahead on the readout, breaking news on the ongoing that gate saga. As his indicted associate, Joel Greenberg, indicates he might be looking for a plea deal. As Greenberg's lawyer said, I am sure Matt Gates is not feeling very comfortable today. A strike three for conservatives as they slam cancel culture while calling for an all-out boycott of America's pastime. Plus, Biden unveils new executive actions aimed at addressing gun violence. Do they go far enough? And the self-appointed prime minister of the United States Senate, West Virginia's Joe Manchin, says he will never, ever agree to filibuster changes, no matter what that means for Biden's agenda or what it means for his own constituents. Well, that puts old Joe Manchin in the, in the running for tonight's absolute worst. But we actually did find someone even more deserving. The readout continues after this. It doesn't it's in the respiratory rate. And it's shown that with fentanyl, you expect a 40% reduction in the respiratory rate. So. With fentanyl, his respiratory rate should be down at around 10. Instead of that, it's right in the middle of normal at 22. So you didn't see a depressed rate of respiration or breathing rate in Mr. Floyd? No, it's normal. An available interior work surface is built to work hard. The den, the bird has a net. Hear about the levels of either fentanyl or methamphetamine in George Floyd's system. Are you seeing either of those as a major uh, prominent factor in his death? I'm not seeing them as a major or prominent factor, but I think that we have to consider that many of these things are synergistic. In other words, they work together to increase the potency of something. And that is what I think will come out more as we get into the autopsy report. Got it. That's there are other contributors. Actors. Yeah, no, you're, that's Dr. Andrew Baker is expected to testify, and that is his testimony, use of force, and some of those other factors. Dr. Liebenoker, have you treated uh, patients who've overdosed on fentanyl or meth? Yeah, absolutely, and they do have very slowed respirations, uh, and uh, you, I, the testimony uh, about the norfentanyl, which is the metabolite of it, when patients come in and overdose, you know, it happens relatively quickly and their body doesn't have a chance to metabolize the drug, and I think that that's very telling, too. So, so what's being said, the defense wants to have the jury believe that Mr. Floyd is sleepy. Are you seeing that, number one? No, you're not. And to someone who's having a fentanyl overdose, do they get sleepy? Is that the way, way it goes yes. down? Yeah, they're obtundive, yeah. I mean, I've treated patients, even uh, treated uh, police officers, that fentanyl is so potent that they just were handling it and had passed out uh, from the powder. So I, I've seen that, and I didn't see that at all uh, in the videotape or uh, any Got it. part. It looked D like a fentanyl. Dr. Dupree, you mentioned, uh, and let's talk about the testimony of Dr. Baker. He's the medical examiner. What are you listening for tomorrow? Well, I'm looking for a lot of things. Um, the 
the mention of no bruising, for one thing, on the external surface of the skin. And that's one thing to look at. But it's the internal dissection, which is important, of the neck muscles, of the back, of the bruising, if there is any. Um, those kind of things will really tell us the extent of the pressure. Um, the particular hemorrhages were mentioned, and there were none. And that is something we look for, but it is in no way conclusive um, of not having pressure um, put on a certain part of the body. Again, I think that this is, is a good case for positional asphyxia, but there are other contributing factors. When we are able to see the autopsy report and find out the status of his heart and of his lungs, of his natural health condition, I think those things will play a factor. And that's some of the testimony that we're going to hear tomorrow. Again, that's a huge witness here. We're talking about Dr. Andrew Baker, the medical examiner, and uh, it's his findings that we're going to be delving into. You know, one of the biggest questions that we've been getting, why are we not hearing more about Derek Chauvin's past? After the break, we'll tell you what we know and what the judge will allow that jury to hear. Essential Mist transforms fragrance infused with natural essential oils into a mist to awaken your home. Yeah, if I would have told you the Twins, 14 hits, 8 runs, Luisa Rice has 0 at this point, I think you'd be pretty surprised because, especially with the start you got off to, it's obviously just a rough day and they're all in the past and this one matters. 2-0, I beg your pardon, hey. A recent report found big cities have lost 400,000 jobs, while suburbs and smaller cities have added 175,000. One of New York's biggest real estate developers believes 10 to 15 percent of workers will stay home, the rest splitting their time or coming back. If you're looking to attract and retain the greatest talent pool, they got to feel a part of your organization. they got to feel that they have a sense of purpose, they have a sense of values part of your culture. That's what 25-year-old Ali Mika misses hired just 10 days before the lockdown. Just working from working from home, not having that tribal knowledge of uh, talking to the person at the desk ne next to me to learn from. But after a year of working from home, a lot of Americans have no interest in returning to a big box office building. They want more elbow room, more recreation, more quality of life. Software company executive Alan Gilchrist used to bounce between offices around the world. A year ago, he rebased to Hawaii. I found that I can work in Hawaii and manage those expectations, manage those demands effectively. I like the camaraderie, but I also like quiet and, and, and the little sanctuary to go deep in my space. Back at Amazon's HQ2, the blueprints call for more collaboration rooms, restaurants, open and outdoor space, hoping a very different workplace will encourage even more game-changing innovation. Tom Costello, NBC News, Arlington, Virginia. On this Holocaust Remembrance Day, lessons from the past more relevant than ever as we confront an epidemic of hate in our own time. Here's Harry Smith. 101-year-old Eddie Jaku survived the Auschwitz death camp. His parents did not. My father, 52, and my mom, 49, died in a gas chamber with 1,500 people. 20 minutes before you suffocate. Jaku had considered himself a proud German. Jewish, yes, but a German first until the Holocaust. Who invent something like this? Now they ask, but has been done 80 years ago. Now it's time to forget. Never. The hatred of the Holocaust is not yesterday's news. I know the lesson well that hate continues. Elizabeth Edelstein heads education efforts at the Museum of Jewish Heritage in New York. I'm seeing not just anti-Semitism, not just acts of hate against Jews, but against other neighbors. Hate crimes in America have risen to the highest level in more than a decade. In January, these men posted pictures of themselves doing a Nazi salute outside the museum. Hate does not live in a vacuum. It requires allies, those who will look away. Ich sage immer, wir haben das nicht gewusst, aber Täter sind wir ja auch. Wir haben das ja. In the new film, Final Account, we hear Germans who grew up in Nazi youth programs, then served the Third Reich. For some, denial is their best defense. Das ist glaube ich nie. Das glaube ich nie. Das glaube ich nicht. Of the Holocaust, survivor Primo Levi said this. It happened. Therefore, it can happen again. 
Harry Smith, NBC News, New York. Up next for us tonight, he's making history again and inspiring America. Whoa, Susan. Oh, I'm looking for coupon codes. Well, Capital One Shopping instantly searches for available coupon codes and automatically applies them. It's called Shopping Smart, not hard. But I don't have a Capital One card. You should get one, but you don't need it. Ask them about their attitudes toward the vaccine. One person we heard from is Billy Bryan. He's 49 years old, a teacher in Memphis, Tennessee. He says he's young and healthy and that in his view, what he sees as the potential risks of the vaccine outweigh the risks of COVID. Let's take a listen to what he said. My real hesitancy, though, is I just don't really want to see the government or anybody force people to do something that those people feel like is not in their best interest. You know, so again, you know, if people are comfortable with it, I think the more the merit. The meat. Take um, to the, the topic of the. It eliminates black political power. Mandatory. It's so obvious, even I can see it. And why is no one saying this? Yeah. Yeah, and you're quite right on, on uh, the diabetes, too. The underlying condition for a lot of this COVID is Coke. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you for that, uh, Tucker. We'll be uh, watching uh, Tucker Carlson today. You've got a lot of subjects subjects of the crown on that show but you do let an american citizen get in there once in a while but uh, a lot of british subjects on it interesting uh thank you Tucker. we'll talkers. see you in uh... <laughs> don't say that uh... to show his sense of remorse which he does have and a sense of acceptance of responsibility he's uniquely situated uniquely situated to do what right to be yeah. able to deliver somebody like matt gates on the proverbial platter and so time we call it in legal language prejudicial it's too prejudicial to include everything you ever did otherwise jurors are going to get the sense you're a bad guy they're not going to evaluate you on this they're going to evaluate you on all of that however not so fast the judge will not exclude everything right because they're going to introduce some things goes to common plan a scheme goes to modus operandi goes to who you are but remember when you and you introduced it there mike when you showed what he did in 2017 got the accommodation rendered aid put them on the side think about how powerful that evidence is for the prosecution that goes to show you knew exactly what to do you knew exactly what the protocol was you knew exactly what the procedure was and how you have to put someone on the side and you got a medal for right so you knew what you had to do but you didn't do it here it goes to the issue of depravity it goes to the issue of criminal activity and so this in and of itself the June 2017 incident is very very powerful all right let's take a look at uh, another incident here and this one does not go the same way it's a female is trying to twist away Derek Chauvin pulls her to the ground in a prone position again we hear that kneeled on her body to pin her to the ground again moved her out of the house in a prone position uh, the female is not physically resisting, I'm reading this, uh, and he's using his body weight to pin her to the ground. So that's similar. Misty Maris, so this one, it would seem, would go against Officer Chauvin, or the, uh, former Officer Chauvin. Correct, and as Joey said, the evidentiary rules do not let us, allow us to bring in evidence of prior bad acts, which would tend to impugn somebody's character. However, sometimes a bad act can come in under a different evidentiary rule. So here, this incident was so similar to the incident with George Floyd. The judge is allowing it in. Joey said it before. It's modus operandi. This is not the first time this has happened. Something very similar happened in the past. Got it. Darren Porcher, what do you make of it as law enforcement, this mixed bag here on these two incidents that the jury is likely to hear about? Well, I think more should be introduced, not less. I understand it from the perspective, as my fellow attorneys mentioned, but however, it sets forth the precedence of him being um, Derek Chavin, understanding right from wrong. In a 19-year career, he understands, as you mentioned with the first case, whereas he turns someone on their side. He understands what to do and do it the right way. And then you introduce the second piece, whereas he did the wrong thing. So it clearly shows his understanding as a 19-year veteran and how to assess issues. And when we translate that to how we dealt with George Floyd, I think it presents a compelling argument for his knowledge in a 19-year police career on how to do the things, how to do things the right way. But first time, he would go on to play at Augusta five more times, inspiring generations of golfers to come. I certainly hope that the things that I have done have inspired a, 
lot of young black players, and they will continue on with it. That's nightly news for this Thursday. Thank you for watching, everyone. I'm Lester Holt. Please take care of yourself and each other. Good night. Don't miss an all-new Law & Order 